Hey guys, Yui here. So today's video will be two parts. In the first part, I will be making a wreath out of some of the greens that I got from the garden, and I also bought some at a florist. And in the second part, I will be making brass bells out of paper cups. So if you already have a wreath or you know how to make one, you could just fast forward to the part where I'm making the brass bells and I will post that timestamp on the screen for you. But if you want to learn a little bit more about the wreath making, you could just stay with me right now. Wreath making is a fairly simple process, but there are some options for different wreaths. So I have some of the wreath frames here that I quickly will show you. So this one is uh, very good for beginners because it already has notches here. So all you have to do is put greens in the notches and this is how you make your wreath. Now this frame right here, I bought at a dollar store and it has four different rings and I sort of like it because you can make a very simple wreath um, that is just very light and elegant. So just affix some of the greens with a floral wire and that's all you need. Just love the simplicity of it. I also have this grape vine wreath that I'm repurposing from last year. And all of these frames, obviously you can repurpose. Um, and this one is spray painted silver. I will cover entirely with greens so this doesn't really matter, but um, you can obviously paint it a different color. You can leave it natural, but these wreaths, you can use floral wire to affix your greens, but you can also just um, put your greens directly in the wreath and they will hold. This is a form I'm going for today because I'm looking to make a very full and rich wreath out of the greens for my garden. So I have my wreath form here and I already attached floral wire to it because I'm going to have lots of greens here and I want it to be secure. But I wanted to talk about the greens I'm using first because this is a gardening channel after all and I like to talk about plants. Um, so this plant right here is a Leland Cypress and a lot of people have a love-hate relationship with this plant. Now, this is a very fast growing conifer in uh, my zone, zone six, Northern New Jersey. So if you have a small garden, it can quickly outgrow its place, but it also makes very fast and uh, beautiful hedge um, that you're probably going to have to shear twice a year if you want it to be in control. But what I do with my hedge, I actually cut a lot of it for Christmas decorations. So my Leland Cypress is barely keeping up with them. Um, as you can see, the underside of the plant is very pretty and blue in color right here. So this is going to be my main greens for this wreath. Now, the next plant that I have in my garden that I'm using here is blue spruce. And this is a beautiful plant. You know, blue spruces, you can't overuse them in the garden because then it's just a little too much of the blue. I have one, it is in a shady location, so it starts to become very spindly. If you plant it in mostly shade, you could see it by the branches here, how stretched out they are. And also the coloring is not as great as it would be. Now spruces are incredibly hardy plants. If you're in zone two, you can plant a spruce with no problem. Um, the next plant, is not from my garden, but I wish I had the sun for it, is um, Eastern Red Cedar or Juniper. Just check out these berries. I love this plant. It's a native plant. We actually planted a lot of them in the park for the bird population. Bird population um, really are attracted to these berries right here. These berries are used in spices. My dad likes to use them on meat and fish dishes. And um, I think that junipers are underused and it's just such a beautiful plant, very fragrant, uh, but you kind of have to check if the fragrance is okay with you because some people kind of find it a little too pungent. The next plant I have here is a white pine right here, which is also a um, native plant. And the... All the pine family has these needles that are arranged in what 
is called fascicles. Right here, you see these bunches of needles? Now, the way you tell the white pine is uh, each fascicle has five needles. And that's how you can ID a lot of the pines. Um, and you can count them that actually has five needles. Uh, beautiful plant, really fast growing. A tree, not very long lived, starts to lose it, its limbs very fast. But a great tree for a park or a large property. And the last plant that I have here is obviously not from my garden. It is not native or hardy to our area, which is eucalyptus. And I got it from the florist. I just love these uh, seed heads. Now, if you use eucalyptus in your wreaths, um, don't place the wreath outside if it's below freezing, because I did that last year and they actually turned dark. Dark in color, they froze. So these are my greens that I'm going to use today. Next step in a wreath making process is fairly simple. You take the greens that you're going to combine and my base will be Leland Cypress right here. And you start to layer them in bunches. Then I have my white pine. I'll have my uh, eucalyptus, juniper and blue spruce. So here is my bunch of different greens. And what I do next is I just attach them to the form with a floral wire. Now, the bigger your bunch, the fuller your wreath will be. And then you repeat the process again. So I take my Leland Cypress and I'm going to turn it over because I like the color of the underside better. And then I have my white pine, have the eucalyptus, juniper, and blue spruce. And I repeat it again. So what you can also do, you can alter where you're going to put your bunches to make your wreath fuller on the inside, on the outside, in the middle. Um, I like to just alternate that um, on the inside and the outside. And then you just repeat again and again. All right, you guys, this wreath is done and this is exactly what I was looking for. Lots of plant variation, lots of different textures. Look at that. And it looks so good, but it smells even more amazing because of the eucalyptus and the juniper. Pine smells great. So um, the next step is I'm going to show you how to make these bells right here out of white paper cups. So these are white paper cups turned into bells. To start, I make two small holes on the bottom of the cup and then I pop out the bottom of the cup with a Sharpie. Um, you can use another blunt object. Uh, just make sure it's not too sharp because you can rip this bottom out. And I did ruin a couple of cups before I got it perfectly. Obviously, we just need to practice. And you just go around the cup 
and gently pop out the bottom. Just like this. The next step is to unfurl the rim of the cup. After I unfurl the rim, I fold it back in at the same thickness, or I can also fold it back in a little bit further to make my bell smaller. This way you can um, make larger bells, medium and small, by um, the size of your fold. So when you fold it back inside, make sure it's nice and flush on the inside, right here. And if um, there are any imperfections here, that's okay. Uh, that will make your bell uh, look even more natural. What I do next is um, I actually wrinkle the cup in random spots. So I go around just like this and it will make, uh, it will make your cup or bell look even more authentic because it will look hammered. And now we can make the clapper. Um, I like to make the clapper out of chopsticks and the size of the clapper is about the height of your cup. So I'm going to break this chopstick right here, just like this. And then I'm going to use a floral wire that is a little bit longer than the chopstick. And wrap it around the thinner part of the chopstick. The thicker part will be actually sticking out of the cup. And then I twist the wire a couple of times and then I twist it around the chopstick to make sure that it's nice and secure, just like this. The next step is to thread this part through one of the holes that we made earlier in this video, just like that. And there's our clapper. And then we're going to thread, thread this again through the second hole, like this. Now I'm going to make a ring for the top of this bell so I can hang it um, using this rope, or you can also use a ribbon or whatever the thread that you decide to use. And to make that ring, I just take a spare cup and I cut a piece about this thickness. And then I am going to cut even a smaller piece after I wrap it around my finger. This is right about the size of the ring I need. Just like that. There we go. Um, and I'm going to use a hot glue gun to secure it. Now I have these markings on top of the bell that um, gives it a way that is still a cup. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go around with a hot glue gun and go around the seam right here that will cover those markings and it will also make it look like this bell was welded. Just like that. And now our bell is ready for painting. Here are the painted bells. I painted them outside and I let them dry for about an hour. Uh, the paint that I used is called metallic dark copper right here, but I'm not done quite yet because I want these bells to look even more natural like this and more metallic. So I'm going to use a second coat of paint and uh, the name of it is metallic rose gold. 
And the way I'm going to do that is uh, use a random cup and a wrinkled paper towel and just blot it on top of these bells. You fill the bottom of the cup with just a little bit of the secondary color. You use a paper towel and you go all around the bell. And you can see already just what a difference it makes. And then you let the second coat dry. After the bells dry, I thread a rope um, through the ring on the top and I make a knot just like this. You can also use a ribbon or any sort of piece of thread for this part. And your bells are done. All right, you guys, this wreath is done and it turned out beautiful and it smells amazing. Um, there's one more step though. I will spray it with this wilt proof solution, which will preserve the greens and will make this wreath last a lot longer. Uh, but I hope you guys try these two projects, making the wreath and making these bells out of the paper cups, which I think is so cool because you cannot even tell that these made out of just plain white paper cups. They look so real. Um, anyway, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.